friends, welcome back to the Blissology Podcast. I am your host, CC, and I'm joined by my co-host, Hubby. Hey everybody, this is Willem, and as always in this podcast, we talk about love, life, and all of the things that we deal with every day. Yes. So, before we get into our topic of the day, as you guys know, I have this, you know, my segment, my moment, my blissful moment that I want to share with you guys. And I know he think it's crazy. <laughs> he doesn't like it as much as I do, but... I enjoy this moment. Okay. Well, I'm glad you do. So, how about we start with you, babe? So, what was your blissful moment today or yesterday, the day before? Well, this week happens to be a rainy week. In fact, on... Monday mm-hmm. morning, mm-hmm. I got soaked. Yeah, it was leaving really the bad. house. It was really bad. Uh, yes, but on top of that, I had I've had an interesting beginning of the week so far. I mean, I've, I've run into a number of challenges, but but one thing I realized is that in the midst of all craziness that mm-hmm. may happen in our lives, yeah, we we have to find reason to be grateful, and and I know for me the way that I handle things, my personality. I can keep a cool head regardless of what's happening. Yes, sometimes I may say one unusual word because mm-hmm. something just hits me, but I get back to my rhythm and calm down and figure out what we need yes. to do to fix yes. things. And 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 I'm fortunate for that because I know there are things that, that happens to people. Sometimes it just throws them off so far mm-hmm. from reality that it causes them to hurt themselves. So right. thank God I've been able to keep my... Um, my cool when things happen, but it's been an, it's been an unusual week, and it's probably going to continue to be that. But you know what? Whatever it is, I'll deal with it, and God's on my side. That's right. Yeah. So that's good. So what was yours? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> mine was, of course, you know, my kids. You know, I it's love my daughter. Kids, it's all about the kids. They're listen. Um, so today. The little one had her reading group um, and she was reading, you know, like her story for the teacher. Of course, they virtually online and she was reading it. And I was so proud. It was such a proud moment. Oh. And <laughs> whatever. You may not see it because I'm home with the girls oh. and I've seen that, I, you I'm, know. I, I understand. Okay. Well, I'm glad you understand. I'm glad you I'm do. just saying, oh, you know, when, when some things like this happen, people just goes, Guy, oh. when you have kids and they're doing so well in school, as a mother, it makes you feel so proud of your children. Whether if they are in kindergarten, middle school, elementary school, middle school, high school, college, whatever it is. It's like you feel so proud. Well, as, right? as a parent, you have to always be proud of your child. Yes, especially you, you have, when it comes to their education, to. and and I was like really proud of her. Not that she, yeah, she read the whole thing, the whole story to the teacher, and she did the questions, and I was really proud of her. And the and of course Brielle, my oldest one, and she was like, "Mommy, I'm doing a project," and she didn't think that we have the thing that she needed for her project. So I went in the kitchen, I grabbed it for her. And when I came back, she's like, oh, we have it, mommy. We have it. I'm like, yes, we, I do have it. I miss, so- I miss out on these moments. You know, this this is the the disadvantage that comes with being at work. Sometimes yes. you miss yes. you miss moments like this. Yes, you do. <sighs> you do. And I think to me that virtual learning, I don't know, when they go back to school, I told my husband many times, I may keep the girls at home. I just feel so much. Like, to me, it's like I'm part of their... Are you unusual? Many people that I run into, they complain about how difficult it is to be at home with Bring them to me, okay? Kids. Bring them to me. I'll no. Think about, what? I love it. I, I don't have room I, for I, more I, kids I, I have room. Listen, but, I have a whole backyard. You know, so many people that I've spoken to, they... they They've they've gone with how difficult this is. Yes, they're You're like one of the very few that actually goes... Well, I'm glad. I like this. I do. I love it. I think I I just like the one on one with them. I just like yeah. That right. I'm I able think to... I think that's one of the biggest thing. One of the yes. biggest advantages that comes with this virtual thing as a parent, it gives you the opportunity yes. to get really really involved in what's mm-hmm. going on in your child's school. 
Because, you know, it used to be that right. maybe right. once a semester or yes. once... Yeah, they do semesters. Yes, you right. get to do a, a meet the teacher right. or if you request a conference. If you then, care. <laughs> but but even when that happens, it's usually outside of the classroom setting. So right. you don't really get to see mm-hmm. them doing the thing. Yeah, yes. You, you yeah. don't because you only get to see when they bring She's it... She's special. You only get to see when they bring it home, right? That's the only time you get to see the homework. Yes. And but it's it really it really I I think I should become a teacher. <laughs> a virtual well, teacher. <laughs> for your information, teaching your own kids that's that's great. Teaching other people's kids yeah. who will not listen to you, who will not do what you want them to say, True. who would True. disrespect to you. Oh my god, yes. That's a whole different thing. Oh, speaking of listen, there's this little girl in my in my 5-year-old daughter's classroom. She does not care how what she's saying coming out. Okay, let's just say she told the the teacher that maybe you don't understand what you're teaching us, <laughs> and I was like, did this little girl just tell the teacher to check herself? I was like, oh my god! And mind you, that she's only five years old. Mm-hmm. The teacher is only five. I mean, the the, the kids, the, the student girl's is only, only five, five wow. and she told her that. Well, hey. If the teacher is, but I'm like, she them just told her to check her math or check what she's doing. Yes. Was Listen. the teacher off or was the teacher no, on point? No, she wasn't off. The teacher wasn't off. It was okay. just the kids who was just trying to be, you know, I know it all okay. kind of kid. You know, you. So come that's the challenge it would run if you tried to I teach would other just people's tell kids. Her, you know like what? your daughter says that to you, you're gonna put her right back in her place, right? I, yeah. If I'm you a can't teacher, I will put people. you right back in your place. So I'm gonna tell you, you, you yourself. You can't do that. This, this but yes. Away. Oh, and I'm into and the, and the thing is too. You know, I do treasure box for the girls. You know, every Friday I give them a little treasure because they did so well in class. Listen, I take this whole thing to the next level. Okay, let's just say, <laughs> let's just say I'm proud of my daughters and I want them to be, you know, to feel it. Right, when your kids are doing well, you need to treat them. So. I got this treasure box for them, and I today's not Friday; it's Wednesday. Well, did they get in the Saturday. treasure box? Yeah, today's Saturday. So you so, you're breaking your rules already. So I went in there and I gave them, you know, a treasure box, uh, like a little treasure gift or whatever toy. Those things so, are little squishy things, and they get dirty. They get all over the house, and I have to worry about cleaning them up. But you know what matters is the fact that they got it and they happy and I'm happy. And, and every day when gonna, I get home, they tell now, me what they got. And yeah, right. And now I feel like you know what? Next time they want to get another one, they're gonna make me proud again, and they look forward to that. So yes, that's my blissful moment, y'all. Sorry it's too long, but listen, when your kids is doing so well in class or whatever it is in their life that they're doing, I think it's good to. You know, show it. Yes, I agree. Yeah, you have to be as parents, and not just parents. I mean, you have to be proud of anyone who does great stuff. Yes, because you know that that help reinforce that right. that, that greatness. In them, mm-hmm. So, all right, well, all right. So let's go straight into it because we kind of like took a little bit longer for our <sighs> blissful moment. So let's go straight into the topic of the day, baby. Right? Would you agree? Yes. Yes. So we are going to talk about, um, I want to say, let's just say advice that you would give to your teenage self when you were a teenager. What would you have said to your teenage self as a 15 year old, 16 year old, you know, or 13 year old, whatever age that you feel like you could have done better? What you, advice? Me? Let's see. I want to start uh, with you first and then we... You know, I'll give my advice. It just hit me. I um, I got my first job at Burger King. I was... You can have it your way. 16 <laughs> years that's, old. That's the thing, right? The slogan, have Is it your it? way? No, that's McDonald's. Oh. Jeez, don't don't mix them up. But What's anyway, the Burger King slogan? I don't know. You used to work for them. How I, could I don't you know. Don't ask me that. Anyway, so um, I got my first job at Burger King at 16 years old. Um, I think it's have it your way. And I remember my first check. I've always wanted to get one of these um, Air Jordans. Okay. Yes. 
So, man, I was pissed when my dad told me that, no, mm. you're not going to spend that money in an Air Jordan. Wow. Yes, I was not happy. I went, I went to get the Air Jordan and but I went to get... um. I was working, but and and now when I look back, I realize that he was right. So your own money, but you couldn't get what you wanted. With no, I money. couldn't get what I wanted with it, but we would have been a waste of that money. But you wanted to satisfy yourself, right, at the moment. Yes, I wanted to. <laughs> but the whole reason that I wanted to is because the people that I was around oh, had that stuff. Okay. okay. And I wanted to get it too. Mm-hmm. So... I was not happy that I could I, not I bet. get it. But now I look back, my dad was right. So if I could tell my younger self anything, I'd say, hey, listen, be very smart with your money. I know I spent money like I had a Timberland boots. I had, what was those, the Tommy Hilfiger jeans? They, those were what was like, like the FUBU. Clothing. The thing back then. Yes. I mean, these things were And I know expensive. you were into a designer clothes, right? Not as much, but I spent some money on some on some clothing, which at the time it felt designer right. Shoes. But imagine what I could have done with this money. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I could have put it towards things that would have benefited me oh, a whole lot later in life. I was 16 when I, okay. when I started so working. So you didn't know so. any better. I didn't know any better. That's why if I would, if I had the ability to go back to tell my younger self anything, mm-hmm. money will probably be the first thing. Mm. You know, be smart with your money. Just listen to your parents. If they tell you, you know what, maybe you, you know, my dad took me to the bank. Yeah. With that first check, and I opened my first bank account. Oh wow! How much money was it? It was like five hundred dollars. <laughs> okay. Oh wow! That's okay. That's good. Because um, you know, for training, they had to. I had worked a little bit extra, although I was part time, okay. but for training, okay. and I think it was like the, I think it was like for three weeks pay, or was it even five hundred dollars? But it, but it was enough money that I would have been able to it's buy. It was one fifty to buy no, because <laughs> the Air Jordan was like a hundred and fifty bucks. Then they go as if. And I know I could have been those um those, uh, those Tommy Hilfiger jeans were. Wait, did you like, had one of those boots? Those yellow boots. That those were the oh, okay. Timberlands, okay. but that was later okay. on I got one of these. But yeah, those things were expensive. You're talking about over a hundred dollars for those boots, and those were construction boots. Obviously, those I wasn't working in constructions, right? I was in school. <laughs> but that's what but that's what was like, that, that's what was popular yeah, that during was that the time. Style back then. Yeah. Remember, I even I even wore some of my t shirts inside out. So that, that was something that was popular. Or you buy it, you don't take the tag off, you let the tag hanging. I think kids may still do that. Yeah, I think day. so. It seems so long ago, but yeah. Yes. So I did a lot of unusual stuff. <laughs> did you do any of those things? No, my parents would kill me. Okay. Yeah, well. my, my parents would have killed me if I no. I mean, as far as buying expensive stuff, no, not really. I mean, I was not that type of person that would go and buy You ex- missed that. I think I did because my no, mom. No, no, you didn't. It's a good thing that you did. <laughs> no, you know. I think I think you know when I was younger, my mom always wanted me to save and save and save. Which is a, there's nothing wrong with savings, right? We should save our money to have a better future or to you know the thing is when you save your money, so by the time you get ready, married, you ready, right? So when you are ready to get married, you like have your money in a big account and you're ready to like buy whatever that you want to buy. I think that's their mentality. But which is not bad. Which I is think, good. I think no. kids should be encouraged to save. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But I don't think for me, I would tell my younger self to trust in yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, I think in my teenage years, you know, I think a lot of us have that, but I want to speak for myself. We kind of like tend to have this not not that I want to say low self-esteem, but we kind of don't believe as much as we should in ourselves because we We're teenagers, doubt, not we confident. doubting ourselves. Um, we have fear and we feel like when we do something, we got to show off. We got to prove to someone else. We got to prove to other people. And I think um, back in high school, I mean, I was not, I was never the type that would want to be in a crowd or be 
fit in with other people, I would either have my lunch with one or two of my friends that I would have class with, but nothing really like, oh, they go to gang, you know? Um, you sure you weren't in a gang? No, I was never. And I and, hmm. and I think that just my personality, I think I'm like a lonesome, I think they call it. Like, I like to be alone, okay? <laughs> I like to be alone, but I am an introvert. I'm very, I am an introverted. I think a lot of you guys who are, you know what I'm talking about. We like to be alone. I think we feel a lot better when we alone, not have to be in a group. Um, But yeah, I would tell my teenage self to trust yourself, believe in yourself, have confidence that whatever that you want to do, you can do it. Because a lot of time when we young kids, we go through a lot, especially young girls. So yes. Okay. Remember the time when I was in the I was at a wedding. I was at a party, whatever it was. A wedding, a party, I don't know. It was an event. Somewhere where there were people that would have most likely want to come and talk to you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she had this habit. Yes, that's the habit that I would that to avoid talking to people, she would pretend that she's on a phone call. <laughs> Hello. Oh, sorry. Hang on. Hang on. Hello. Yes, that that was me. Oh man. <laughs> but it's but it's true. the thing. I don't want to talk. Like if we don't have nothing to talk about, like I think I did this to you a couple of times, maybe once or twice when we were dating. What prior of us dating? Yeah. I mean, it's just because. I mean, you would text me, and I'll be like, ah. Oh. Well, listen, words are expensive. You shouldn't keep wasting them. No, I, I think it's important to talk to people. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The I right think it's people. important because, well, the right people or the wrong people, because sometimes you can help straighten people's minds out. But, but this conversation, I don't think it's important to even have. Mm-hmm. But avoiding, I mean, I easy to tell somebody, listen, I want to talk to you right now. I got something I'm doing. And that's the thing. <laughs> I don't think I had it in me to, to, tell, to tell someone, someone that. that I don't have it. And I listen, can't talk to you right now. I don't have it. So I would pretend to be on the phone. So that mm. way you see I'm on the phone. So but, you wouldn't come but when, to But me. when you're confident enough, you can say that right. to people. You right. know, hey, I'm busy. But even if I I'm confident, I don't think I'll ever be able to say that to someone. Try it one day. <laughs> I think it's rude. No, what no. Do, I can say, politely say, listen, I, I, I want to hear this, but I'm, I'm busy. I'm doing something right now. Or I'm not in the mood. Uh, I don't. Okay. Why not? What this person's gonna is this person gonna pull out a whip and whoop me up? No. Yeah. Listen, <laughs> if you're not an introverted, okay? So you don't know what I go through. But let's move on. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, tell you. I mean, confidence is so, important, especially yes. when we're growing up. I know that's something that I, I had to force myself. Confidence, yeah. Is you know, English is my second language, and most of you guys probably can tell already. I couldn't tell. And I would tell you. I forced myself to be able to speak, to be able to articulate my thoughts. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't always like this. No. (laughs) And and now I'm confident enough that I can come out and say it, but I would tell you, man, in class, you know, sometimes I would pray that I don't get picked on to speak because if I get up and say something, well, my nerves will take over and it's a guarantee that the wrong thing will come out. And man, kids in school are no jokes. They will laugh at you. Oh, and there's another thing too. You know what you want to say, but because you have this fear, this anxiety. Well, yes, the nerves, the nervousness just take over. You just and you start sweating. Like you're like, where's the sweat coming from? It's not hot in the room, but because of your nerves. Right, yeah, because your nerve. But 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 most of it is because. You you fear that you're not gonna say the right thing, and then you get tongue tied. That's another but thing. Yes, a yeah. lot of other things. I man, it it goes it goes from the inside up. <laughs> but I force myself. I mean, when I tell people that I, um, like, Cece laughs at me all the time. That I actually got a dictionary and pick words out and memorize them. Let's just say you study like, the whole book. The, the SAT. They still give out the SATs. I actually got the STs word list. I studied them just so I can have a rich vocabulary. So when I need to say things, I would always be able to find a word to express what I want to say. And yes, English is still not my first language. So, so what? 
I speak how I speak. <laughs> and and I'm confident enough. Better. Well, I'm doing a lot better. But until I built the confidence to be able to allow myself to practice, mm-hmm. I would not have been the way that I am right now. Right, over and, time. And, and, and that goes for any other skills mm-hmm. that someone wants to master. You have to allow yourself to be able to do it, but do it bad until you get better. Right. Because if you're expecting to one day just be an expert at it, it's never going to happen. Mm-hmm. And I learned that early on. Hey, you laugh at me, so what? I laugh back at me. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel better. Right, yeah. And I move on and do the next one. You That's laugh right. at me again and I laugh. But I guarantee you, mm-hmm. by the time I do the 6th, the 10th, the, the 20th speech, mm-hmm. I was a lot better. Now exactly. people are forcing me to stop talking. Oh my God, yeah. Please stop. <laughs> But yeah, yes. confidence is important. Confidence is important. And I think having that is um, having the confidence to allow you to get to so many like places, like get you oh, to yes. a lot of different places in life. And when we don't have the confidence, we just kind of like closed minded. We just want to be in our own little shelf, right? Because oh, yeah. we feel like we're not worthy enough to do to be in that place, to be at the top, to be, to, you know, be the, the, um, the manager or whatever it is, the CEO of the company because of our confidence, we don't have it. So if we don't have it, we see ourselves. this is where we belong. We belong at the bottom. We're not, yeah. we're not up there. But yeah, I mean, I think another thing I would say to, um, to my teenage self is, <laughs> Don't take any. Why are you looking at me? (laughs) I'm waiting for you to say what you're going to (laughs) say. Don't take any BS from nobody. Oh. Because listen, when you are a teenage, a teenager, you go, we go through a lot. Some teenagers have been through so many like crazy nonsense stuff. Tough moments. Yeah. Yes. Like, because of the crowd that they're trying to be in, they're trying to fit in, and people tend to, like, either, um, you know, see them as in, in, in a way that they're not good enough, right? Listen, you got... I think when, when we were younger, I, I didn't have to go through that. I don't know if you did. I don't know if, you, if you, people were like, you know, giving you things or telling you to do certain things, but you were not even sure of yourself if you, you know, could be a part of that. Because sometimes when we think that, okay, you know what? I know I belong here, but because you up up here, so they tend to bullying you, right? They, they tend to tell you stuff that, to me, that's like BSing you in a way. So that's what I would say. Don't take any any words that people will tell you and make you feel like you're not worthy. Pretty much belittle you. Because it does happen. Like so many teenagers that goes through this in their life where people make them feel like you're they're not, nothing. You're not good enough. They're nothing. I mean, not not just as as you, but yeah. I mean I haven't I I didn't I didn't run in, into that. But I I I picked the right people to be around. Like when I f- was in, mm-hmm. in high school, I guess I wasn't eating that much chicken. So I was skinny. You <laughs> I were was really skinny. I wasn't the biggest guy. However, I, I had friends who mm-hmm. were big guys. So I always had people that were bigger than I was that I hang out with. Right. That gives me that protection. So people tend not to have messed with me. And I know during my senior year, I got my car, so I became a bit more popular. Okay. Some people knew me. I lost my parking decal because I was showing off on campus. But I, d- I didn't run into that, 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 that issue where someone would put their words on me and say, you're not good enough. I, mm-hmm. I, I, thank God I, I didn't. Because I've seen like kids back in high school, in my high school, where... You know, because it's soft, they don't really speak up. They tend to um, hide from the crowd. And then there's some 
you know, like the big kids will just belittle you or giving yeah. you any BS by telling you you're not good enough. Look at you. Look who you are. I've seen it happen, like right oh, yeah. in front of my eyes. See it happen, but you know, hey, I was lucky that I um, I didn't do too bad in school, so I had had people around me. <laughs> well, you're a guy. <laughs> well, but guy, I think you know, even too- boy, if, even even boys can get bullied. But well, you yeah. find that when you when you have the right entourage, mm-hmm. you get some protection. Right. Yes. Like, yes, I was a little Haitian kid, do Bella, because when I moved to the U.S., I was put in high school. Remember my best friend, whom I have to reach out to soon, because it's been a little while since we spoke. We we met together, and we kind of, since then, we, we, we've hung out, and we've gotten a few more big guys with us, and that gave us the protection that we needed. Mm-hmm. So people... <laughs> never mess with us why are you lucky <laughs> yes um and actually be, being being we we did we did well in school also so mm-hmm. so that helps us kind of rise above the rest right so does that help i was i was one of the lucky few i've known some haitian kids that get harassed well yeah that's what i'm saying <laughs> yes i yes i i didn't although i barely spoke english when i first got there yes i've got laughed at in some classes right. Right. But the uh, the bully piece of it, or people talking down on me when I'm not in class or on campus, mm-hmm. that never happened to me. Yeah. So I mean, the thing is, people will will do that because either you don't speak the right English, you don't speak it yeah. well. People will make fun of you. I mean, I don't think I've had that because I had a few of us who were you know together. We don't speak the language, but we were like connected, and we're girls. Yes, it may not have been mm-hmm. where. You know, if you've been in the country long enough or if you speak the, the language like properly, you would not get even people who are born here. If you say the wrong thing, they will laugh even at you. People You're that, in school, these school kids that don't play. <laughs> and sometimes you just gotta put your foot down and say, you know what, enough is enough. I'm not taking any any of this from you. Anybody. And I'm not taking it from anybody. So I need to be able to stand up for myself and believe in myself and trust myself that I can defend myself, right? But definitely, definitely, it's good for you to be able to stand up mm-hmm. for yourself. Any other thing you want to share? Then I go back. Oh, yeah. Is it the money, the confidence? Believe in yourself, believe trust in yourself. yourself. Yeah. Yes. I think if I yeah if I were to go back now and I'm I'm 16 and I tell myself these things and I believe them and I do the exercise to make sure that I instill these on my days mm-hmm. I would have been a lot further along in life. Would you still be married to me then? Probably. probably not. Well, you know, I think you and I were faith, so I probably would still marry you. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. I agree. I would probably still marry you. <laughs> <laughs> but yes okay well this is us this is it in a nutshell so just think about you know your teenage self if you had to go back what would you have changed and i think it's good for for you to do some reflection every now and then right absolutely absolutely so guys thank you so much for tuning in today and please remember to subscribe we are on like the video <laughs> like the video but i was gonna say we're on Facebook, YouTube, um, SoundCloud, iTunes, TuneIns, and yes, please like the video and subscribe. And we are under I am Sister Bliss and all over yes. social media. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.